Okay, so what you saw earlier in the video where there was no talking, I used Deco Art Matte Medium, which is something you can add to any of your paints, or you can use it to go over a surface, and that's what I did. I am painting watercolor paper. This is 140 pound 9 by 12 inch pieces of paper and it's really kind of super thick but it is watercolor paper so it's you know porous it kind of soaks the paint in and I'm going to do some pours this is for a conference that I'm going to this weekend we have um, I'm in a mentoring group of about 900 people across the world and this weekend we'll probably have about 100 people in a what's called a mastermind intensive weekend and it's all about your business aspect of your art and um, your goals and this and that kind of thing and so each table is going to have eight people sitting at the table and you have to bring something to contribute to the table decorations and I wanted to do a pour but I didn't want to pour on anything three-dimensional so I'm thinking I'm gonna pour on watercolor paper and I'll either leave it this way or I will cut out a butterfly out of this shape that part I'm not sure about you'll you'll get to see the finished product but for this video I am doing the pouring part my plan is to um, do a pour on one and then smash down do a dip that's my plan I would love for it to turn out kind of butterfly-ish looking we'll see how that goes so I have a bunch of colors mixed up I'm using deco art I've got bright blue um, true blue copper teal mint sea breeze purple rain docks the same purple glorious gold and my last color that I saved to mix up for you oh, and I also threw in some Liquitex iridescent medium into one or two of the paints but I don't know if it's going to show up or not but I've got uh, this premium this is phthalo turquoise so it looks like a navy blue basically and but it has a more turquoise feel to it I'm going to do a one-to-one -one ratio with Floetrol so I'm just putting equal, an equal amount, just eyeballing it, equal amount of paint and Floetrol. And I'm going to mix it up real quick, see how turquoise it looks now that I'm stirring the Floetrol into it, because the Floetrol lightens it just very slightly, but then when your paint dries, it'll dry darker. So this will be a deeper blue, but it's got a turquoise cast to it and you always when you mix your medium into your paint you always make sure and scrape the sides of the cup and then you want it to come off in a steady stream and that's a little on the thicker side I'm gonna put just a, a slight hint of water not much that's better and then I have OGX in my little dropper bottle and the OGX is the coconut milk anti-breakage hair serum it's in the link below the video under Amazon recommendations if you're on your computer look at show more and then look down below and if you're on your your mobile device there's a down arrow one drop is all you need you don't need a pump of the OGX you don't need a, a drop per ounce of paint mixture like you do a silicone it takes very little paint so that was the last color I needed to mix I've got eight boards so I'm doing four pairs I'm going to put my gloves on I'll bring over my torch even though I'm not so sure I'm going to need it <clears throat> and the reason I taped it down was just to to keep the paper from warping up and it's going to warp anyway with the uh, the wet paint on top of it but hopefully with the tape 
being taped down to these pieces of cardboard and foam cardboard it will hopefully keep it from warping too much and then I can always try to flatten it back out when it's all finished <clears throat> so I really don't need more than an ounce of paint for these boards like I said my plan is to do a dirty pour and then dip the other one into it that way it's kind of random so I guess we will see how that goes so I've got all these beautiful colors that I'm going to pull over here <clears throat> I wanted it really kind of more in the the blue blue greens purples and the couple of metallics so that gives you a an idea of what my color scheme what I wanted it to be <clears throat> so I think I'll start with the sea breeze and it's not going to take much paint at all I'm going to kind of go back and forth on the paint colors as far as vividness. I kind of try to do contrasting colors. I'll throw in some metallic gold here. A little bit of the lighter purple. I don't remember what I've used. The lighter blue, I'm not going to go with too much of that. Do a little copper. And I use this teal mint, which I love. I don't know if I use this deeper blue, but anyway, here goes. And I'll trickle a little lighter purple over here on the side and then I don't have much of this deep purple so I'm just going to use a little bit. I got way too much paint. <clears throat> I'm going to stick a stick in and cross through it a few times. Maybe a drizzle. So I've really got about an ounce and a half of paint in this cup which is more than I need. Go ahead and heat it. And I'm just going to give it a little time to spread around. And I was going to do four little dirty, core, dirty pour cups, <clears throat> but I wanted to do the first one to make sure it was kind of where I wanted it to be before I went any further. <clears throat> And this paint is, has been sitting for a while, so it's actually on the thicker side. So I'm probably going to have to uh, use more paint than what I used. Because it's not going to be enough. Now that I see what I've done, that's why you don't, that's why you don't go full steam ahead until you see something you're you know, trying out. And already the the paper is warping a little bit, but hopefully it'll lie black, back down flat. But you know, I did the matte medium just to help seal the paper in just a little bit. Okay, so that's not going to spread. So I'm going to have to do another cup. This time I'm going to pour on the outskirts. Now this is too much paint, but you got to do what you got to do. And 
what I'm going to do is just kind of try to get some of this paint scooted so it'll slide better. You know, I'm not working with the wet base coat at first like I sometimes do with canvases because I didn't want all that paint on this piece of paper. So keeping those things kind of in mind. Okay. So I'm going to tilt this way a little bit just to spread paint in every direction. Stick my finger in if I've got some gaps. And I've got extra paint here. I'll drip in the areas that I don't have a lot, but you, the more you stick your fingers into paint or anything like that, the more muddied it's going to be. So you really, really have to be careful. Like that. It just turns straight to some purple color. <clears throat> so just trying to move it around. And a lot of this paint is going to squish out because I'm going to do a smash. But I am trying to get the full surface covered. The other thing that I don't care for is I've got a big gap of gold. So I'm going to try to spread some of this paint out a little bit. So my paint, but my paper is rippled the way I'm holding it and bending it. It's rippling. This is purely experimental. So I'm going to take this other one, lay it straight down on top of it, and smash. You can't see what you're doing. You can't even really feel, so it's kind of hard to know what's going to happen. And the other thing too is I can take a skewer, like that was kind of a golden area, but I can kind of slightly manipulate with my skewer. So if there's like, these are like low spots with not a lot of paint. But not too bad.
I'm going to put these aside to dry. And there they are. So I will be returning in a, a little while. It's going to take some time for it to dry. It may take a day or so. But I will return to let you know if I'm making butterflies from them or if I'm just going to do like a quote on them. Possibly mat them. I'm not sure yet. I will let you know what my decision is. But for now, they've got to dry at least for a day or so. So I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Click on the bell in the bottom right for notifications if you're a subscriber. Click down below the video where it says show more on your laptop or your down arrow on your mobile device. And that gives you all the links below my video, the description of the video, what products I use, that kind of thing. So take a look below the video, Amazon, my uh, Facebook page, Patreon, PayPal, any link that you might be able to find will be down below the video. So thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye. So here is the finished product and I will show you up close in a second, but here's my butterflies that I made from my pores that you watched me do. There's eight of them. And I am at the uh, Ridgecrest Center in Black Mountain, North Carolina for a conference this weekend. And we're going to be doing a mastermind intensive round table kind of thing. And I'll be at a table with seven other people. And so each of us were to bring something to um, incorporate into a centerpiece for our table. Something about us that we do. And so for me, it's pouring art at this point on YouTube. So... And I'm telling them to let go and fly based on Matthew 6, 25 to 34, which talks about God providing everything that's needed for the birds and the flowers and that kind of thing, that he desires for us to have everything that we need. So a lot of people that are artistic are oftentimes held back by fear and I want to encourage these people to go forth with their art journey and to pursue their dreams and uh, to fly. So that was the, the meaning behind choosing a butterfly. And I picked the colors that I love, the beautiful peacock colors with the, the metallics. And so... What I did to finish them off was I cut them out of the watercolor paper, which you saw me painting the 9 by 12 watercolor um, paper. And it did, you know, it warped a little bit, but that's okay because it kind of lends itself to these butterflies. And I could have flattened them out, but I didn't because I wanted them to be a little bit ripply. And I, um, I used the glitter glue that I came from Walmart in the craft section gold glitter glue the brand is go create so that was from Walmart and then I used copper wire from Lowe's it was the uh, 18 gauge wire and so what I did was I cut my butterfly shape out and I used my glitter glue on the body and I drew out with the sharpie the the design which is all random on each one each one's a little bit different but I drew it out with like a, a blue sharpie and then came back with a gold pen it's very you know it's not perfect by any means but I drew in the design with the the gold paint pen and then I put the little dots and accents of the glitter glue to have you know to go with the body and the edges and so they are they're pretty substantially hefty and then I hot glued the uh, copper wire on the back and made a little antenna so anyway that's the end of the project there and um, I'm hoping these ladies will be 
happy with their butterflies and it'll be something they can take home and cherish from this conference. And I look forward to seeing what they bring to the table for our centerpiece. I'll be taking pictures and I will post things probably in my Facebook group. If you're a member there, you can come over and look at the pictures there. So there you go. There they fly away. They're going to be flying off to their new owners tomorrow. All right, I'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Thanks. Bye-bye.